I didn't know I was called to Haiti. I didn't want to be called to Haiti. But I knew I was called to Haiti when I stepped off the plane. It was unexplainable. It was just the pure joy of being here. And if you've ever been to Haiti, you know that there's nothing here in and of itself that's going to give you that kind of joy. Our normal has been redefined. The way we drive, the lack of power, how we eat. We can't go to Walmart and Walgreens and pick up things that we need and clean water and drinking water. And your way of life is so different here than it is in the States. My wife Cindy and I have been married going on 11 years now and, and back when we first met, we're dating, Cindy was coming to Haiti on short-term mission trips. My heart was drawn towards Haiti. I came back going, Lord, what do I do with the other 355 days of the year? She would ask me about it and I would say, you know, Haiti is good for you, but it's not for me. Eventually. I found myself on a plane to Haiti. As soon as we were away from the airport, a smile came across my face, joy. And at that moment, I knew that I was where I was supposed to be, that this was where God had called me to minister. On that trip, a seed was planted in the farmer's hearts to bring change to Haiti a place where the strange doctrines of both Christian legalism mixed with voodoo have withered the country into being the poorest in the Western Hemisphere. In order to take on such a spiritually dark environment, the Farbers would need to be grounded in the truth of God's Word. The first book of Andrews that I ever read, The True Nature of God, totally transformed my life. I didn't have to do things to be right with Him or to please Him. The message of grace radically changed my life. They made a call for Karis Bible College, and we just knew that we wanted to be under this kind of teaching. To be able to sit under the Word every day for four hours, it was just what we needed. During one of the morning worship sessions, I said a silent prayer and I said, Father, show me your heart. And he took me back in time a few months. My youngest daughter was coming to visit us. She walked towards me, gave me a hug, and. I was just so overjoyed at seeing my daughter again, so overwhelmed in my love for her. And that's when I heard the still small voice of my father saying, this is my heart for you. This is how I love you. And I knew from that point forward that this was the message that I needed to take to the world. And I knew I was going to Haiti, so I knew this was the message I was taking to Haiti. Anxious to share the Father's love with the people of Haiti, Jeff and Cindy decided to drop out of Karis to become full-time missionaries, a calling that would later prove to be the right place at the wrong time. Instead of going back for our second year, we decided we would go on to Haiti and start ministering in Haiti. We had a, a nice half-hour discussion with Andrew, and he said, I don't think this is the right time. I don't think you guys should go. You should finish school. Of course, we thanked him and we left. All of the things that we thought we had in place fell through within months. Doors were closing one after another. The place that we thought we had rented for two years was no longer our home to stay. Circumstances in Haiti became so unbearable for us. I ended up very sick. I was bedridden for a week. Once I was able to get healthy enough, um, we actually went back to the States and had to reevaluate things. We knew we were called to Karis. We never should have left. It was time to return to the States. In Mark chapter 4, it parable of the man who cast seed into the ground, it says there's first the blade and then the ear and then the full corn in the ear. All through the Bible, it shows that we grow into things. If you go from zero to a thousand miles an hour, that's not acceleration, that's a wreck. It'll kill you. 
Jeff and Cindy realized that before they could fulfill the calling on their life, they first had to fulfill their calling to Karis. They moved back to the States and finished their second year at Karis, Wisconsin, where God gave them the missing pieces to take on the spiritually dark environment of Haiti. Upon graduation, doors opened that once seemed forever closed. The Farbers returned to the mission field, this time God's way. When we came back as graduate students, that was the timing. Being able to say we were graduates of Bible school was huge. Heart of the Father ministry here in Haiti. We minister the word in a number of different ways. We're doing Bible studies. Uh, we minister on Sundays. Then we also help a school. And the school has approximately 36 students. And these students are the ones who can't afford to go to the other schools in this area. And so Heart of the Father Ministry started a food program with this school, which has been huge for the students and a joy. It's great to go and visit them and know that they're getting food as they're learning. We do a feeding program that came out of Hurricane Matthew where we bag up rice and beans, about 20 servings, and that rice, those rice and beans go to about 54 families per food drop. We've fed over 660 families since we started that program. We're doing discipleship evangelism. We have healing services. We also hold pastor conferences. The pastor conferences is what has been the heaviest on our heart, the most important reason why we're here. Most of these pastors have had no biblical training. They just go based upon what they've heard all their life. And unfortunately, a lot of the things they've heard all their lives is wrong teaching. Here in Haiti, so many pastors, so many conferences, the way they preach the gospel, they make people afraid of God. They present God for a person God isn't. But he tried to present God in his true nature. He said, I have not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. God is a good God. And he only does good things. And he does them all the time. For every pastor that we reach, they can take this message and disciple their congregation. And the Word of God just multiplies and grows. And so many more people are able to be impacted by the gospel of grace. We're pulling them out of the law and the Old Testament and showing them that they are loved based on Jesus and not who they are and what they've done, but what He's done for them. In addition to raising disciples under the finished work of Jesus, the Heart of the Father Ministries is building a radio station so that they can play translations of Andrew's teaching on God's unconditional love and grace. Bonjour, c'est Andrew Womack et c'est un tape que nous mettez je dis à nous parler parler au sujet de l'esprit, l'âme et corps. But they cannot do this alone. If you would like to help the Farbers saturate the nation of Haiti with the power of the gospel, Andrew would like to encourage you to visit their website, heartofthefatherhaiti.com. I just want to take this time to thank Andrew's partners. Without Karis Bible College, I would not be prepared to be here in Haiti as a missionary. Thank you so much, partners, for being alongside Andrew and seeing his vision and capturing his vision and being a part of what he's doing to advance the kingdom. What you're doing with Karis is raising up leaders who are able to take what Andrew is giving to the entire world because it's here in Haiti now, thanks to you.